is back in Wilmslow in the warmth of the video booth if and when we need to hear from him. Well, a couple of weeks ago, Wigan were winning a World Club Challenge. A week later, they performed terrifically well against Huddersfield. Can they keep up that level of intensity? Or do they have a vulnerability today, two weeks on from that big match, against this lifted London team? Well, well people talk about that, don't they? Uh, backing up the following week, you're always expecting you've got to come up with something after the final order, the World Cup Challenge like they did. It's the following week that could sometimes get you. And I'm sure Matty Pete, when he's talking to his players, would have talked about the challenge and focusing on them more than focusing on who's in front of you with the London show. There's a little bit of history um, that doesn't make the most comfortable of reading from Wigan's point of view, is that the last time they played London in the Super League back in 2019, over at Ealing, the Trailfinder Stadium, they lost, and that was two weeks after they appeared in a World Club Challenge when they played against the Sydney Roosters. Different circumstances this time around. I was going to say, so you're expecting an upset then, are you, Dev? <laughs> I expect nothing, Terry. But it is London who are in these early stages looking for a little bit of expansion as well. London in the mainly black. Wigan in the mainly light blue today. Not familiar colours to either of these sides. Into dummy half goes Sam Davis. Started his career at London many years ago. He's um, been around and about at York. But back here last year, part of that promotion winning side. And a, a gallop on again here. And the offload suddenly has them scampering away to Leyland. It's gone to ground momentarily. But London showing a bit of purpose here. Six again, right hand through that square. Switch back again. Six again. Another set of six, not square. So, London have got an opportunity here, too. Yeah, well, Fenton Rogers it was who gets to get the offload away. Just run out, along with Reese Kennedy, to start and prop forwards them. They get a penalty. This is a good start for London. If you can keep on getting the points and keep that scoreboard ticking over in your favour. But Reese Kennedy and young Fenton Rogers, big tough prop forward, debuted last week on loan from Huddersfield. Davis with a tap and go. Here he is again, Rogers. Yeah. Just a big blast forward again from Fenton right. Rogers. Up and plays. Out of dummy half comes Davis. Now it's with Meadows. He'll switch back again. Wigan's defence having to be tight in these early stages because questions are being posed here by the team in black. Davis searching this blind side level, but he can't keep that move alive because Wigan's defenders are in quickly in response. Lovell's having a look at the referee before he eventually plays the ball back. It comes to Meadows again, shifted across here. Only Leyland's involved, drops the pass off. Four tackles gone. It's Davis. And here comes Leyland again. And now they search a little wider, but there's no gaps there. Last play. Here's Davis. Search is left again. Little grubber kick through from Hakan Baloudi, but it's uh, easily taken by Miski on that far side. And we can get possession, and we'll be relieved to have this possession in these early stages. Yeah, they run the pressure when I know it's only three minutes gone in the game, but you put that ball through, it's poked by Abbas Miski, the former Bronco player himself. There he is, second carry of the game, does a decent job to stay in the field of play. The London Broncos team just kind of let Wigan dictate the speed of the game. Another one of those youngsters here, Zach Eckersley. Eckersley with a carry, picked up from uh, dummy half by O'Neill, and almost Ooh. finding a gap as well. Dupree, it's uh, picked up by O'Neill again. It's the last play here. There's a little bit of miscommunication from Wigan. It looked as though it had been dropped forward. It's very untidy at the end of that set. And maybe is that a sign that Wigan are just a little upset? You know, they get caught in a bit of two minds because it's a quick play of the ball. What you'd have then is your Brad O'Neill that jumps out dummy half expecting something beyond because London couldn't quite get back. Not everyone was on the same page as him then. Zero, zero, come in. Well, has lost the ball and the referee says play on and Fallerman with a pass away and this will be a stroll to the line from Wardle. Underneath the sticks he goes. And Jack Farriman, the exciting youngster, can claim a try assist.
but it's Wardle whose name goes up in lights. Well, forced the error. They did do that on the back of a mistake they made, and they say as soon as the ball drops free, Luke Thompson picks it up. He's looking for some players outside him over on the left hand side, and Jake Wardle's there, but Jack Fadiman, like you say, with his first try assist, the 18 year old McCartney who's a late inclusion into this side. He loses possession, and he's not waiting around, is he? Luke Thompson for the referee. Fadimon goes deep into the line, and the space out wide. And Jake Wardle, he goes over for the opening try in this game. All about making sure you finish your sets off, get to the end of the year. Your sets, complete your sets six, don't turn the ball over. You know that this Wigan side can score points all over the field. The new World Cup champions they score the opening points in this game. And Kieran with a, a kick right in front of the sticks. Kieran taking over the kicking duties, of course, in the absence of Harry Smith. Evan French, Liam Marshall amongst those who are rested. Liam Byrne has got a bit of an injury, hasn't he? So that's why he's out of the 17 for Wigan today. So Kieran just settling himself. Puts it right where he wants to put it, and we're going to have the lead by six points to nil, and that might just be a little bit of puncturing of the Broncos' bubble. Yeah, exactly. That's not the sort of start that they needed in this game. The Warriors will always try and attack through the defence. The, the mistake from McCartney, like I say, Luke Thompson just picks the ball up straight away. They're looking to get him on the counter, aren't they? You've got to match the Warriors. Every time you're carrying the ball, you know exactly what to expect. Well, the pattern of concession from London's point of view is fewer points as each week goes by. 40 points against St. Helens, and then 34 against Catalan, and 28 against Holland. They're getting closer and closer to their opposition, but whether that pattern can continue today remains to be seen. Neil had a dummy half. This is uh, taken on a strider to Mega. Wigan through to Pre, moving it ominously closer back towards that London half of play again. It's a little kick through by Ryan Hampshire. London starting from deep and having a lot of work to do because that Wigan chase is good and strong as well. And that's going to be for the full 80 minutes, isn't it? Akin Maloudi is going to be tested in the corners where, where the Warriors like to kick it up. A bit too eager here for the referee. James Valerie was talking to them, but most defensive teams like to get off the line as quick as possible. They talk about the first three steps, and they'll try and intimidate the opposition, especially when you're bringing the ball away from the corner, and there's not much room in that defensive line. It's a decent, decent atmosphere here today. To say that, they were expecting a crowd of about 5,000, and it looks as though they've got that expectation. Oh, there's a, a mistake. Davis, will be it? Wigan who get it back. No, it's a killer they've made when they conceded that try. And Jake Wardle, they made a mistake, McCartney bringing it away. Now it's another mistake that they've made in their own half. Wigan aren't having to work really hard to, to gain the metres because of the early turnovers in the game. Jacob Jones looks as though he might have taken a knock there, which led to that mistake, but rugby league can be an unforgiving game at times, can't it? And Wigan back in the box seat. O'Neill is Farrimund again. And now Dupree just hits that line really well. And meters after contact are good. Tyler Dupree. Neil, another set of six. Set restart. Farrimund bounces in. O'Neill. Mega. Just angling that run, trying to get the arm free. But London defenders are attracted in quickly to. Just put him off the opportunity. O'Neill, Wigan poised. Farrimond, back it goes. All the way to Kieran, who twists. And he's put down. Miski quickly up there. Miski fancies a go at the line, and Miski's got over the line. Well, the London defence will be disappointed with that because they could have seen him coming and they just seem to back off a little. And Miski has Wigan's second with barely nine minutes played. Abbas Miskin, I said the former London player himself. 22 games, scored 19 tries for them. And scores an easy try, really. You know exactly what he's going to do. 
when he gets the ball over on the right hand side. It's nice play, nice build up play, good footwork. As soon as he comes in behind the dummy half, you know that he's going to run it. It's a quick play of the ball, the markers aren't set, and the defence are just defending on the heels. You've got to make sure you get forward, you get your bodies in the right position, and he just crashes over for a, an easy try. And Matty Pete will be happy with the way his side has started again. 10 point lead with a kick to come in 10 minutes. Well, there's an ominous feel to this game, isn't there? Wigan, I mean, renowned for their defensive efforts over the last couple of years, a tough team to break down, but they've started at a pace in terms of scoring points this year. 32 against Cass, 30 against Huddersfield, just the two matches in Super League because of the week off for the World Club Challenge, if you can call it that. They're well on course to keeping up that 30 points plus in this game here. Yeah, like you said about, about the Broncos conceding an average of 34 points in the, the first three games. So they know, and like we said at the start of the game, they've got to be absolutely bang on and focus on what they do when they haven't got the ball more than what they do when they have got the ball. So Kieran again, a lot of talk about goal kickers around Super League at the moment. Teams that don't seem to have them, Wigan have the luxury of at least a couple <laughs> commentators <laughs> curse because he put that wide. Kieran, generally speaking, is a is a very decent kicker of the ball off the team. And of course, Harry Smith, who we've seen banging him over from all angles over the last 12 months or so. Yeah, totally agree. Not like him to miss that. And the Broncos coaching staff know that they've got to get into this game pretty, pretty quick. They've got to match him physically. The so coaching staff that looked absolutely forlorn, didn't they? just uh, about a week ago with that defeat against Hull when they thought they got their opening win of the Betfred Super League in 2024 but hearts broken at the very last and already safe in the knowledge which they would have been aware of before that this is going to be a really really tough test today but they now know for certain that there is no switch off from Wigan there is no lowering of the intensity the Warriors are here to do a job and O'Neill a dummy half to Hampshire, drops it back on the inside, here's Isaac. And sometimes that's the beauty of sport, isn't it? Like when, when Mike Pete chose to rest some of his players, other lads have got an opportunity now, and it's up to them now to set down a marker. A little bit of a juggle by Dupree, but the referee had good sight of that, said he never actually completely lost control. Hampshire with a kick, Carney underneath it, there's a chase is on from Miski. Some uh, shepherding going on on that far side, which uh, helped out. And London, with the offload, are able to advance in decent fashion on that first play. Well, you know what you're going to get from the full back, Hakim Maloudi. He's got an offload in his game, offloaded the ball more than anyone else in Super League. And McCartney, plenty of good metres here. Davis had a dummy half drive on by Reese Kennedy, one of their new signings this year. And it's striking as well when you look at that London squad, the number of players who wouldn't be playing professional rugby league were it not for this club, London Broncos. A lot of them starting their lives here with this club. Either hailing from the Midlands or more personally hailing from a, around this area, this, uh, this greater London area. And that's why this club is so important, they will tell you. Ollie Leyland is caught in full flight. Thompson with a tackle, well Davis out, right. left it goes to Meadows, Meadows with the chip again and Miski rises well and I think is, oh no, there's a shepherd, a shepherding going on from Wigan, so a, a, a penalty boost here for the Broncos. Well he's a good kicker isn't he James Meadows, he absolutely drops it on a dime, you can see he's got three players to the left hand side of him and they just kick it up and I think it's Adam Kieran. Boys, the man who just takes out a Broncos player wouldn't get him to put any pressure on Miski. So here comes the Oldham lad, Fenton Rogers with a drive again. Move. Terry says on loan from Huddersfield. Oh. Must have last year at Bradford Bulls, wasn't he, Fenton Rogers? Back towards the middle again. Yep. Just testing out Wigan's Two. resolve, but Three Wigan's resolve has been Miski. tested many times. And very often comes up Trump, so London looking for a bit of magic, Meadows. Gets it on again, Lovell is felled. Sam Davis to dummy half again, Meadows. And Fenton Rogers will try to strike things up. Davis 
flicking it back. And they go wide again. This is Jared Bassett, the Australian. He's within sight of the line, but there's only one play to go now. It's a, it's a step back from Leyland, and he's got the ball away. And London have their try as well. Jacob Jones crashing over. And the Broncos, wow, what a response. They've been given the opportunity. They've taken the opportunity. Every time I watch that Oli Leyland, I really like what he does with the ball. I said at the start of the game, he's not the biggest, but he certainly is, is brave. And he just needs people pushing up, supporting him. And when he goes at the line, he thinks, right, it's not on. Leaves a couple of players, and Jacob Jones just pushing up in support. That's all the little halfback needs. He's been playing a lot at fullback, but he started his career. I remember watching Medway Dragons as a youngster. And he started at half back there, made his career as a half, goes to full back, he's got this kick to come. Mike Eccles and his assistant, Ryan Sheridan, will be cheered by that. And an opportunity here for the gap to be narrowed to four, which will uh, be a very good position from London's point of view, given the way that Wigan have started this game. Shown a bit of heart and soul, the kick is good. It is over, six for London, ten for Wigan. We'll just try and play at a bit of speed, and that's exactly what Leyland does. He knows that he's going to have some support on the inside. It's your skill, it's your execution, it's your awareness of where you are on the field. And Mike Pete and his coaching team will be disappointed, really. There was enough Wigan plays to solve that problem then, but they were broken down by a committed side who just managed to push for each other. Jacob Jones on loan from Lee, but he's another of those, you know, Birmingham ball. Started his professional career here at London. Travelled out to Coventry, back to London, and then up to Lee, and um, he had a few Stay games back. for them in their promotion year, didn't he, when they were in the championship doing ever so well. And just getting some real important game time here with the London Broncos this year. Here's Maloudi. Yeah, big for London now that they get through this set. Don't make a mistake. You see so many times in, in Super League and Rugby League in general where you score a try and all of a sudden you seem to relax and take your focus on getting to the kick. Rogers trying to bludgeon his way forward. Two, move Davis, that's an involved tackle that, well, I think that there was a grab of the ankles by uh, Rogers. who was clearly not happy with the treatment he was getting. Yeah, well, Fenton Rogers. I thought he did well there. An initial contact he was... It was very difficult to bring down. You see three players just trying to get him down. He wouldn't go down. And then he was pulled back. He gets up. And I think Harsh done to that. Well, there is the classic, as you were saying, Terry. Get through the next set. And uh, London haven't got through the next set with anything like the purpose they would have liked. And they've gifted Wigan an excellent position again here. And Wigan, with a bit in their teeth, of suddenly an opportunity as Debris is very, very close. And in fact, it's better than close. He's over to score. Tyler Dupree, his 13th appearance for Wigan today. He's won every trophy available <laughs> in the previous 12. And now he's scored his third try in his Wigan career. And Wigan are back in a much more comfortable position. Yeah, he started the game well, hasn't he? Certainly stepped up, taking the ball forward, carrying it with some real purpose. And you can see that when he gets the ball from the dummy half, Brad O'Neill, he just hits and spins. He knows where the try line is, keeps powering forward. And like you said, won everything in his time. Look at that, the fight, the urgency to get the ball down, but they'll be disappointed. They had the ball, they give a penalty away. Like I said, I'm not so sure they agreed with it. But my, Matty Pete will know that that's exactly the sort of response that he wanted. Well, Tyler Dupree has now won, uh, has scored as many tries as he's won medals in Wigan Colours. League leader's medal, grand final winner, World Club Challenge winner. And he's now got three tries as well. Adam Kieran should have two goals in just a moment. Because right in front of the sticks, it's just about as much as a gimme as you could expect. And he... he he has got it, and um, Wigan just disappearing a little off into the distance again here with that score. Well, it's pretty easy, isn't it? Just punch into space, hit a hole. Hopefully, your hooker will find you. 
That's exactly what that man did. And he knew that if he gets the pass from Brad O'Neill, that he just needs to, to keep his composure, get to the try line and ground the ball. Harry Smith up there in the uh, alongside the coaches. Not playing today, obviously. <laughs> the uh, the Wigan royalty here today Martin of fire is uh, is uh, watching as well uh, of course London Broncos royalty as well Martin he played in a Challenge Cup final for them well, penalty high shot and so you concede points you kick off you give a penalty away there's Martin he still looks about 25 as well doesn't he He's a terrific character to sit yeah. and chat to. He'll tell you how good he was. <laughs> and you can't argue with without him. Even, yeah, but that's without even asking him. Yeah. And here comes Field. Two. Threatening. Kieran in at dummy half. Isa waits for the pass. Puts it on to Mago. Mago going across to see if there's any weak links there in that London defence, but not far. Oh. The chain Release. stayed tight. O'Neill, one-handed pick up by him, a little dance forward, evades one defender, creates a bit of space. He was being tracked all the while by Barryman, but never much chance of the pass away. It goes right to Hampshire. Hampshire's going to try and take them on. One play to go for Wigan. Two steps away. It's another set of six. It's a, it's a reset of the tackle count again, and Farriman is going to have a run. There's some confidence from the youngster. 18 years of age, to remind you. Davis to Mago, Mago spins. London defenders come flying from all directions. The Broncos are just about holding on. Oh, and then Mago reaches. And, well, the referee said he's already completed the tackle. Yeah, he said the well, tackle was already completed. We saw Dupree doing it earlier, but this time Mago thought he'd have a go, but the referee said, no, son, the tackle was complete. You can't do that. Yeah, well, you James can't do that. was clear in his, in his call, wasn't he? He thinks... Oh, wow. I tell you. Well, I would like to look at that in the video resting. That was a, a try and look. You could see he was a bit disappointed, Patrick Mayer got. There was a, a, there was a case for the defence here, wasn't there? Yeah, you. But not given. Not given. Taken forward here by Rhys Kennedy for London Broncos. Still the 10 point gap. Wigan are looking good at times, but London are showing some brightness. Some enthusiasm for the course. Davis. Mayland just uh, pitching it further right. No way through for Bassett. Just wait for Ferrimon. Closed him down. Sean O'Loughlin said that he's a tough defender, likes to get stuck in. This is Maloudi. Little double pump from him. They're not taking it off. There's a clash of heads amongst a couple of Wigan players there. Yeah, Brad O'Neill and Jay Moore are down. Meantime, London continue. It is the sixth tackle, and uh, Maloney trying to make things happen. Might just have made things happen. And Kershaw is the man who's in, but the referee's not sure here. We have a try. Well, he says try on the field. What do you reckon, Terry? Yeah, try. Good composure from Maloudi. Gives the ball to Kershaw out wide, who knew exactly what he had to do. OK, we've got a live call of try. We're checking the grounding and touch. Well, this Kershaw is in possession. A real acrobatic effort, doesn't it? OK, does the hand come off the ball? Oh. Can you check another angle? Oh. OK, that angle doesn't show me much. Going to go to the... Corner, other corner angle. Okay, camera eight's probably going to be the best angle on this. Kershaw is in possession. The ball there comes away from both hands. He must then catch hold or regrip, which he doesn't, and it hits the floor. Thank you. I've seen the angles I need. I've made my decision. Well, it was a fantastic wow. effort, wow. but it ain't going to count. Not quite in control. Referee has made his decision. We wait for confirmation on the field, and it is no try. 
But um, again, a reflection of the Broncos' enthusiasm for their task here today. Yeah, well, he was spooked, wasn't he, from Deerfield? And he knew soon as that he got up that he tried to sell it that the try was scored. Had a bit of the, the spray on the hands from the physio when he come on. Maybe next time. But disappointed just looking at him. He drops his head, shakes his head. Because that's a certain, certain four points, maybe six below. Junior Assembly is on the field for Wigan. And he's given some robust treatment by those three London defenders. And that is how you've got to handle him. He's only a youngster, but while he can come onto a ball. Talk about coming onto a ball, Thompson takes it. Another step or two further forward. And a dummy half, it's taken. And Field stopped in his tracks. Stay near, risk your step. Hold. Switch back to Isa. Isa with a footwork. Well dealt with by that Broncos defence. Play on. Here's Mega. And left to Farriman, and over the head of Farrell, and Kershaw. Well, it was a knock-on. Could easily have been a try-scoring opportunity had he collected that, but instead Wigan, Wigan strike lucky here, yeah, gifted with possession back. Just doesn't take the right bounce, does it? For Kershaw, he tries it. Unfortunately, makes the error under a bit of pressure. And Jake Wardle and Brad O'Neill have gone off to, for the HIA from the head clash just a minute ago. Well, a couple of what-ifs what from Lee Kershaw. But the actuality is that Wigan still lead here by 16 points to six. Stay there, stay in, out. Working down that right-hand side with Hampshire. One, move now! Here's Isa. Two, move. Give me a Tom Forber on the field. Back inside for Mago. Wrestling. Trying to get a little closer. Forber again. Springs it left to Field, who goes for Farrell. And Farrell trying to shake off the defenders, but three of them hanging on and keeping him at bay. So back it comes with Forber, and this is Field now. And Dupree, with all that bulk and energy and power as well, causing a problem, but London are able to keep him just a stride or two short. The ball comes free, and the referee says knocked off. The correct decision, isn't it? He's trying to wriggle free. There was a bit of a Reese Kennedy and Tyler Dupree just coming together. He falls off the tackle. Reese Kennedy, then he's thinking about going back in. And as Tyler Dupree just spins out, he goes to try and get the ball down, play it. He loses it though. And James Meadows just not letting go of him. He tries to just spin out of it, which he needs to control that ball. Coming up, you can see next, uh, well, later today, Ketlan against Hull FC. 525 double header, but then Salford Wigan next Thursday, of course, 7 30. Salford, the informed team after their victory against St. Helens. St. Helens themselves leads on Friday at 7.30 on Sky Sports Action. Huddersfield, Hull KR, Saturday, 2.55. And um, Hull against Lee later, 2.55 as well on Sky Sports Action. And Catalan against Castleford, making up a threesome on that Saturday, 5.25 on Sky Sports Action. London Warrington back here in the capital on Sunday at 2.55, also on Sky Sports Action. Meantime, right here, right now, it's Wigan who have the lead with 27 minutes played. But uh, they have two players off with a head injury assessment. And to remind you of the new rules, that if, if both of them fail, they can bring on their 18th man. More of that if and when it happens. Here's Harvey Hill. Former a dummy half. Farriman on that right-hand side. He's trying to stand up the defence. Little jiggle of the hips. There's no shortage of confidence from the from the 18-year-old, is it? Another set of six as well here. Dupree with a pass away, and Hill with virtually his first touch will get a try. Wigan just powering their way over. They are showing a real intensity here today when they have ball in hand at that end of the field.
and they extend that lead to 20 points to six. We're quite content, aren't they, to just play off some power generated by the forwards, keeping it nice and tight. Young Jack Faramon got a, a set restart, so they went again. And that just seems to be the theme, the story of the game, where the Broncos do some good stuff and then let themselves down by coming up with a poor kick. They, picked, they kicked early on, give the possession to the Warriors, and the Warriors just tip on players. Nice going at the line. Tyler Dupree not taking too many steps, giving Harvey Hill a chance to pick out the man that he wants to run to, and just too big and too powerful. And you can see just scatters a couple of London defenders and leaves them on the floor. No great emotion on the uh, the earring. Well, they'll be fairly satisfied so far. And Kieran with another relatively simple attempt at goal here. Settling himself. Wigan fans who were in a state of high excitement just a moment ago, falling respectfully silent behind the sticks to which Kieran is kicking, and over it goes, three out of four from him, and 22 points to six is the lead now for Wigan. Well, they're certainly confident, aren't they? And they've been helped in the game by the Broncos. We said they kicked early, but they couldn't defend that next set of six. They give a set restart away, and all of a sudden, they just look to play off some power. Sean Wayne watching on, England coach, and of course, has a senior role at Wigan as well. There's Hill. Wigan advancing. Four, but the dummy half. The O'Neill and Wardle situation, if they do both fail their HIA, as we said, 18th man comes on. Kate Ellis, it's not, it's not, it's not a bad, it's not bad option, is it? Is it? <laughs> he ain't going to be slotting in a dummy half, but I tell you, it's, um, it's not a bad man to bring on if they have to do that. Just look at the leg speed there. Oh, great, offload, nice offload. Great, great offload from Thompson. Do you know, if you run with plenty of power and you run to bust every time and you can just bounce somebody off, there's a good chance you're going to be able to offload the ball. As long as you're his size. Three hands away. Stay squared. Four, but Jake, if you're up. Back it comes here Leave him. for the kick from Hampshire. There's a bit of a chase on as well. There's a, there's a job to be done here for Hakim Maloudi. Oh, doesn't he do well? That was a great kick from Ryan Hampshire. Oh. Goes at the line, just keeps it nice and honest, kicks the ball over the head. And now look at him. This is where the Warriors like to hunt. They get off the line, numbers in. Was that five players in, nowhere to go. And only Leyland with a brave carry here now. It's a good skip, it's a good a good few yards gained. Because they were in danger of being penned inside their own ten. And that will help because the referee's deciding too much going on in the tackle. I think that that's a penalty that was needed. Only they've still got nine minutes to go until half time. They're behind on the scoreboard. By 16 points, they've been dominated. They're down near their own line. But it's what they do with this next set of six. Okay, boys. For me, it's just the field position that they've just not had it at all. When they have had it and asked a couple of questions, yeah, they've scored a try, but they can look dangerous, but they need to get near Wiggins' line. His free spots are worth on loan from Hawkins to Rovers. It's uh, only a couple of weeks that he's, uh, he's with London, but. Release. Will help out. He's not yet played for Hawke, is he? Championship player of the year last year with Jewsbury. Broncos looking to expand, but knock on. The referee calls very quickly as Bobby Story was uh, trying to get himself in a good position. Well, Will Lovely just opens himself up. He's heading towards the, the sideline, which anyone who's running like sideways, it makes you an easy target. You can see, as soon as Liam Farrell gets all of him, Julian Semba comes in. And he just panics a bit, loses possession, and said, just give the ball. Like, they're not having to work hard, coming out of yardage themselves, Wigan, from down near their own line. They're getting the ball on the halfway, which then puts pressure on you as a defensive team. Don't hold him there, boys. Ten seconds. Continue. Stay in, boys, stay in. Stay in. Out. Let go of him. 
Harriman looking to create some space, and again the pass to this left-hand side was it's not one he'll be proud of, and Kershaw tackled out of play, but the referee saying boys, boys, come knock down, on. Come down. Back we go. Back we go. A bit of pushing and shoving just on the, the sideline. Still going on it, Tyler Dupree and Junior Sam just getting in the middle, splitting them up. But well, thankfully, thankfully for Mike Eccles, his side will get the ball back now. They don't have to defend because of that error. It was a sloppy pass to Eckersley. And Kershaw did ever so well to get the ball. Hang on, Rod. Hang on. Hang on. But they were going to get the ball back. Stay square, Tom. Stay square. Go. So, Dummy Harp is uh, Butterworth again looking to bring on the big guns to try and blast their way down through the middle of this Wigan team. One try to the name already, Jacob Jones. They came close as well with Kershaw. They're going up of a second score of the day. There's Butterworth. Skip back to the middle again. A dummy on his inside to Rob Butler, who's on from the interchange bench as well. A little bit of heavily bandaged Butler, who'll pick up and skip right to Meadows. Quick hands again, and it goes to Storey. But again, it's untidy from uh, from the Broncos. And an opportunity to build some pressure dissipates. Yeah, possession, position. Uh, they're under pressure, aren't they? Just the ball's whipped out from Hakeem Malooney. Storey just fumbles the ball, goes backwards first of all, the second time he goes to get it. Played at Keithley last year, story. Played really well last week against Hull FC. Okay, boys. They want to watch themselves on the short side here. They've got Jay Field and Zach Eckersley just against Lee Kershaw. They need to break from the scrum quickly. It goes the other side, though. they have to feed again. All the way in. Young Perriman. I was saying, 18 years of age, only academy player for one year before he's been promoted to this senior team. What a day today for him for his debut. A lot of people excited about being here watching him play, you know? Could be one of those in 10, 15 years' time where you say, we, we were there. And that's the big thing, isn't it? You know, like you, whenever, whatever team you support, it's about the next generation and what's coming through your ranks. Reach it up there, Reese! Thompson. Look at that, that's, that's how you go on to the ball. You can't get set here. Fulber, a lot of ground able to cover there. Dupree eats up the meters despite having two of them, and then free trying to block his way. Here's Fulber again. Marimond with a pass that looked flat. Generous point of view. Thompson tackle. Fulber. Back to Farriman, who puts a kick and a chase into that in-goal area. It is covered by Butterworth, and he has done well to get back in the field of play. Yeah, what about that for a, a cheeky kick, though, from the youngster? He didn't call it for anybody. He wanted to go for it himself. It was picked up well, like you said, by Reese Butterworth. Gets back into the field of play, otherwise it would have been some more pressure. Offside winger. Well, there's no lacking of confidence, is there, from, uh, from Jack Farriman? That's what you get with it. When you've got a big tag on your, your head and everyone's talking you up, just look at that, he kicks, he goes round, Butler doesn't give up then, he knows he's got to come up with the tackle, trying to keep him in the in goal earlier. I've been really impressed with Luke Thompson and Tyler Dupree in the first half. They've really took the game forward, giving the, the hookers something to play off. Uh, we're just getting news, by the way, from down, uh, downstairs that Brad O'Neill and Jake Wardle have both passed their HIAs, so they will be uh, back on the field. Kane Ellis can unfasten his boots again and put his feet up again. Not needed just yet. London Broncos in a decent position here. Butterworth. Now Meadows. Kick came off a Wigan player, but not played at. Malooney thwarted in his ambitions, and Meadows dropped on, and Butterworth picks up, and back it comes to Malooney, who gets it away. It's another set of six here, Lovell. So this is a real opportunity for the London Broncos. Chance to build. They've got tackles in the bag. They've not been here very often today. 
with this kind of generosity of possession that we're going to have given them here. Butler. Find the ground. This is Butterworth. He's going to have a little go himself. Lovell throws the ball over the top. And Kershaw, has he got there this time? Well, I think he might have. I think he might have put that down. I think that might be a try. But the referee's going to the video rep. And we're going to hear from Chris Kendall. OK, tackle two, we have a live call of try. Kershaw's in possession. Ball in his right hand. And he grounds the ball, and he's infield. Thank you, I've made my decision. What a time to score, just before the break. And what a player to do it, Lee Kershaw, the resurrection of a Super League career. Training with Leeds, wasn't he, in the off-season because he didn't have a Super League club to his name. Having uh, gone through his contract at Wakefield, London pick him up, and here he is scoring tries against Wigan and giving London a bit of a hope here. Yeah, you like the story, don't you? Came down for a trial, given a contract, played in round one against Saints. Know that he can score, and the sticky sprays definitely work from the physio. He dropped an absolute sitter when Jayfield put a bit of pressure on him. Not this time, Jayfield, the same man trying to stop him but he manages to get to the corner, and this time, with one hand, he gets it down. And that's exactly what they needed, the lifeline that they needed with a big kick to come here from Oli Leyland. On the touchline. Won't be quite the last act of the first half, but it's very close to it. No shouts to ref, that's, that's gone well wide. But 10-22, two-score game. London are keeping themselves interested here. They, they have looked dangerous down there. Look, when you've got players like Oli Lale and Haki Maloudi, you know, things can happen. But Wigan, they fail to really dominate. There's a man left down on the floor. Then all of a sudden, Reese Butterworth, nice player from him, he gets out, a good offload over the top, and right where he should be, Lee Kershaw scores the try. Well, London have got bounce, and they've got a bit of belief as well. As Jordan Williams carries in. But there is a relent relentless nature to this Wigan side, isn't there? Two, move! That makes you feel they're still very warm favourites to go on from here to win it. But London are putting up a bit more of a fight. Here's Leyland waiting. Back it comes to Kennedy, and they keep it moving. Meadows can't find a way through. Tried the old show and go, but Thompson was aware of it. Butterworth. He's trying to uh, pick a path here if they can. Kennedy put down. In square. Wait. Step back on the inside by Meadows. Leyland's got the task on the last play to try and make something happen, but the kick is an easy one for Miski. No challenge, no height, and Miski able to clear his lines. It was a poor kick in the end, wasn't it? From Oli Leyland. Well, the hooter stands, and the tackle is complete, and the referee will blow his whistle. Well, London Broncos are still in the fight, but Wigan Warriors are dominating the fight at half-time, leading as they do by 22 points to 10. Wigan fans enjoying their trip to the capital so far. We've seen a young fella make his debut. They've seen their tries from their side as well. And Wigan will be confident at half-time, but knowing that there's a real challenge awaiting them in the second half. Jake Wardle, Abbas Miski, Tyler Dupree and Arby Hill, all try scorers for them. We're going to have full analysis of this first half, coming up very soon. It's a big weekend of sport and football in particular on Sky this weekend, of course. Uh, coming up uh, later on today, Arsenal against Brentford. 
on Sky Sports Premier League at 5 p.m. That Super Sunday double bill, Aston Villa against Tottenham at midday and Liverpool against Manchester City at 3.45 as well. And then Monday night football as well, of course, Chelsea against Newcastle United, 6.30, the build-up starting to another big match as well. We're watching a very decent game of Rugby League, the Betfred Super League here this afternoon. Wigan are leading at half-time by 22 points to 10, but London have caused them one or two problems. Wigan early, early scorers, but London finding a response a couple of times, and 22 points to 10 is the half-time score here at the Cherry Red Record Stadium. Well, for, them, for London, they've got to help themselves. The start game's better in Super League. They conceded two tries in the opening 10 minutes. And Jake Wardle was the one who benefited here from some strong defence. And Luke Thompson not waiting around, gets the ball, picks it up, passes it on to Fadimon, who in turn finds the speeds to Jake Wardle out wide. And he scores after the first five minutes. And they've got to make sure, and we talked about it at the start of the game, but finishing sets well. They didn't start the game well last week against Hull FC, you thought, and expected them to start the game better today. But to concede two tries so early on puts Mike Eccles' men on the back foot. When the ball goes out wide over to the right-hand side, and Abbas Miski goes in at dummy half, you know what he's going to do. Look, the, again, the defence isn't set, they're defending on the heels. They, Plant the feet together. Abbas Miski, the powerful winger that he is, just manages to get over the line. And that's poor defence from the Broncos. But when they did have a chance, and when they were up the other end of the field, this is what I like to see with Ollie Leyland. He's a half-back by trade that knows how to take on a line. He's looking at defenders. He thinks, yeah, I'll have a chance, I'll have a crack at that. And Jacob Jones goes in, gives them the, a bit of hope that they needed. But well, then an easy sucker try, a big prop forward in Tyler Dupree, just crashes over, comes onto the crash ball, close to the line, the pass is supplied from Brad O'Neill, and he goes over, and then Tyler Dupree, the try scorer, turns creator with a nice little tip onto the youngster, Harvey Hill, on 28 minutes, who in turn just crashes over, right in front of the Wigan fans. And they've done a decent job, the forwards from Wigan, the interplay from them, they're going at the line, taking the game to the to the Broncos, but the never-say-die attitude, that is what you want from your side. And he failed early on, Lee Kershaw, to ground the ball with two hands, but he manages to get it down with one hand in the corner. That's just given that bit more hope for the second half. Well, these are the... Uh, we've been crunching the numbers, these are the stats from that first half, the telling, telling stat as ever, top line, Wigan 22, London 10. But London just edging possession so far, 68% completion to Wigan 72. Look at the metres made from Wigan's point of view. But they've had to do some extra tackling here of Wigan, but uh, they have certainly outrun that, that London side, outpowered that London side at times with those metres made. And London with 25 missed tackles, which will contribute to that uh, metres made total, of course. Six penalties completed are conceded there by Wigan, which is, I'm sure, something that Matt Bede at half-time will be talking about, you would have thought, because the way they are dominating this game. We're back with a full second-half commentary coming up. Can London Broncos get themselves back in the game with more moments like this? Well, we're being thoroughly entertained so far today, aren't we? In uh, in the capital, London 10, Wigan 22, with a fascinating second half to come here. Wigan, you would think, in the box seat, but there's a couple of times in the game where they've looked as though they're capable of just ripping it up and leaving London in their trail. But the Broncos keep finding a way just to keep nibbling back, just to keep themselves interested in this game. They'll be hoping, I'm sure, for more of that, Mike Eccles and his team in the second half. There's plenty of rugby league. Um, every week, of course, every single game, live on Sky Sports this year, you are treated to a real uh, chocolate box of delights. And another one coming up later on today on this very channel, Catalan against Hull FC. Hull FC, of course, picked themselves up, just got over the finishing line in proper order last week against the Broncos. But a, a trip to Perpignan is going to be a test for them, and you can see the outcome of that 
a little later. Wigan fans have travelled in numbers here today uh, to this Cherry Red Record Stadium. Um, it is their first visit to watch their side here. And um, it's an unexpected one, of course. Six, seven months ago, I don't think many people would have thought London Broncos would have been in the Super League, but not many people expected them to climb of a bottom spot this year. But they are showing Terry in the last couple of weeks that there is a bit of fight in them. Should have had a win last week and, you know, still competing in this game here today. Yeah, and that try just before half-time by Lee Kershaw just certainly gives them a, a chance in this game. But, but they're going to they're gonna surprise some teams this year, that's for sure. We've seen enough fight in them. It's just what they do. The start of the games are, have killed them the last the last few weeks. Like you can't give teams in Super League the chance, the leg up that they want. And to go behind 10 points, 12 points in the opening 10 minutes, Mike Eccles knows that you've got to be absolutely on top of your game from as soon as that whistle goes. And you'd expect the Warriors to come out now, and, and Mike Pete and Short would have been disappointed to concede that try from Lee Kershaw. And he's going to be saying to them, look, don't expect them to just roll over. You've seen that they'll score tries. You've seen that they keep on fighting. We've got to play. Let's focus on ourselves. Well, the Wigan team just being held a little longer in the dressing rooms. Liam Farrell actually leading his side out here for this second half. It's a winning run that we keep reminding you every week stretches back to last June. It was the tight and tense semi-final defeat in the Cup against Hawkins to Rovers the last time they actually lost the game, Wigan. And since then, they've won the League Leaders' Shield, they've won the Grand Final, they've won the World Club Challenge, and they've won every single game they've been involved in. And at the moment, they're looking favourites to win this one again here today, to stretch that winning run. And they say winning is a habit, and it's a habit which Wigan have got. And it's a good habit to have as well. But it'll be London who have possession, at the start of this second half, more of the same, Terry, in this second period? Well, yeah, just for, for both sides, really, what I would say is just keep turning up for your team, mate. But you know that the first five minutes, the first ten minutes of this second half, you've got to wear some decent tackles if you're a Broncos player. You're going to be up against it, you're going to be getting numbers in, you're going to be trying to get dominated with your head turned back towards your own, your own try line. Get through your sets, get to your kick. He's done, a, he's done a decent job with Lovell. He's been targeting the youngster for him on as many times as he gets the ball. Butterworth had a dummy half, getting used to his new teammates, of course, this new environment in which he finds himself at the moment as London advance. It's a decent start. Five tackles has taken them 10 metres inside their opponent's half right at the start, and Meadows will finish it with a kick. Miski is underneath it, but there's a challenge there. The ball is batted back. It bounces for Kennedy, and Kennedy's looking for support and gets it away. And what about that for a start? Over the line goes Jordan Williams. Referee's not sure, but have London Broncos just scored here? I have a try. Well, he thinks oh. so. Soft signal is try. So we're off to Wilmslow again to hear from Chris Kendall. OK, tackle five. We have a live call of try. It's come from a kick, so we need to check that. Players must have both feet behind the ball. Everyone to the left is on the side. There's a player to the right who is off. We're running through. OK, he's going to be well outside. It's not backwards there. Just so they've got a tighter in view to confirm that. Okay, is the ball not backwards? Yes, it is. Okay, the ball is then collected. Passed, taken cleanly. Okay, we're looking at the grounding now. So he's in possession, short at that point. I then lose sight of the ball. Short there, but then I lose it. Uh, see if we've got anything else on this. Okay, that's going to be no good. That's going to be no good either.
Okay, this is going to have to be the angle. Okay, at this point, the ball could be down and it could be on the line. I have a live call of try. I have insufficient evidence to overturn the live call. Thank you, I've made my decision. Well, it was a terrific effort in defence there from Jack Ferryman, wasn't it? But Jordan Williams, the man who sounds like a one-man Formula One team, <laughs> might just have provided a shock right at the start of this second half. We wait for absolute confirmation. And there we have absolute confirmation. And London have a try. Matty Pete, the Wigan coach, hadn't got back in his seat before that try was scored. That's how quickly it came at the start of the second half. And what a boost that is for them. Yeah, well, the last two minutes of the first half, the first two minutes of the second half, just get on the back of a good kicking game. It was a good set of six when they had the ball. Well, then to get the ball up, the McCartney does a decent job. Kennedy does a decent job to get the offload away. And Jordan Williams, the ultra-consistent player that he is, he comes on, he had some punch all the time, doesn't he? Kennedy with a lovely one-handed offload. And Ferrymon, fair play to him. He had a chance, didn't he, of trying to hold that ball up. He was sent up as a try. And Leyland kicks the goal. And it's 16-22. And it's game off. And Dave, like I said to you at the start of the second half, my people would have been saying at half-time, don't expect them to go away. We're in a game now. We scored 12 points in the second half. We got off to a blistering start. But we've got to absolutely take the game to this London side. And they're up for the battle, let me tell you. Well, again, we talk about the London connection. Jordan Williams has been here since um, since he was a kid, came through the, the academy. And, not, you know, there's a lot of pros and against having London in the Super League. But I tell you what, they are, they are bringing players through. They are creating Super League players by their simple existence. When you look at them around Super League, you see the amount of uh, players that have come through the system. It's incredible. Like nine, and nine of this squad, and they haven't got a big squad, have come through the system. They do a decent job down here. Butler gets it further left, and a little step here from Russell. There'll be an excitement amongst those London players at the moment, because they will feel quite a scalp is in their grasp here. Might be making Hull feel a little better as well after last week that they were pushed as close as they were. Well, look what well, we're going to be pushed here. Early stages of this second half. The whole complexion of the game could change again with a blink of an eye. But just at the moment, London are making a real fist of this. Field is put down. And also, don't, don't overplay because you are excited because you're only six points behind on the scoreboard. You've done everything well to get in the position here that you find yourself. And you just got to keep going, doing the things that you've done. Defensively, they're nice and tight. They're not loose around the rook area. Plenty of talk going on when they're in the wrestle trying to take them to ground. There was Wardle back from that um, HIA, and uh, you'd have seen it, dummy half O'Neill. So we have confirmation they both passed in the first half, but evidence for your own eyes that they're both back on the field. O'Neill now scampering out Hill with a little dummy shown, and then he decides to have a go and pushes and pushes. Leg strength from the big fella. O'Neill and up from Hampshire and a bat back from Miski but it's um, into the welcoming arms of Jacob Jones who was hovering a good deal behind that ball there was a bonus <laughs> it's what you call loitering with intent he didn't get back did he? he just finds himself in a position when the ball goes up to pouch it McCartney well I was going to say so to his feet because Wigan hanging on for too long and uh, James Villa, the referee, gives a penalty for London here. That's a helping penalty as well. I was just looking around the rook area of actually who had the hand up and who was offering themselves. And even though we're just early stages this second half, couple of the players, London jerseys, are just looking as though they're saying they're a bit tired, but just not offering themselves enough. Butler dealt with robustly by those two wing defenders, Hill and O'Neill. But London come again here. Scrambled out of dummy half by Butterworth. Flat pass again. London, do they believe they can carry this job through from here as Lovell is put down? Butterworth. Inside again for Meadows. 
Now it's taken on by Kennedy and tried to get it onto Butler, but the ball is spilled and we don't come back up with it. Just trying to link up, wasn't he, Kennedy with, with Butler? They made the, they made the error. Looking, they were screaming for the ball out the back as well. This is Miski who gets up and plays. And um, the young fella from the wing, Eckersley, brings it towards the halfway line. He looks powerful, doesn't he? O'Neill has got Farrell, and Farrell just charging down the middle again, just trying to give his side a bit of momentum. O'Neill. Hill. Dupree. Tyler Dupree, try scorer in that first half. Leg lifted, well, not by much, but enough. Yeah, puts him in dangerous position, though. He just hooks his leg up. You can see as he's going to ground. He knew exactly what was coming. Two men up top, Butler just lifts the leg, drops down. It's enough, says the referee, James Vella. Is there a kicking tee coming on here? Yeah, I sure think there is. Surely there'll be two points. I think the coaches are saying go for two. I think the players wanted to carry on, and then um, the voice of reason from the uh, from the touchline has its way, and Adam Kieran with a chance to add a two. Significant two here because it gives the lead an, an eight-point feel, a two-score lead, if he can put it over. A little more awkward than he might have anticipated today for Matty Peet. Especially when his side raced to that tender lead with just about 10 minutes played. It looked as though it was going to be Wiggins by a distance, but... Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's a yellow card. Yellow card. Video referee getting involved there, and Rob Butler is off the field for 10 minutes as a result of that. That's, that's a massive blow for them, that. Rob Butler leaving the field. And just leaves them with 12 men against uh, a determined Wigan side. And I'll take these two points and I'll take it to two scores in front for them. It just doesn't help with that man in the sim bin. So Wigan looking for an element of comfort here on a day that has not been entirely comfortable so far. Kieran settles. Solid looking signings in the off season from the uh, the Catalan Dragons. Adam Kieran, and yep, again for the referee. <laughs> I love his little whoop of delight when the ball goes over. He likes a goal kick, doesn't he? And um, it's London 16, Wigan 24 now. Well, that's exactly what they didn't need. And you can see when he gets in, Rob Butler just hooks that leg. And as he goes down, he doesn't drop fully on his shoulder. He puts his arm on, and it was a dangerous. Well, he did, does put him in a dangerous position, and James Vellet, with the help of the video referee, Chris Kendall, says, yeah, that's enough, that's ten minutes in the bin. Well, London have shown good character so far. It's going to be tested as much as it's been tested throughout the afternoon now, because down to 12 and Wigan, with that little extra advantage on the scoreboard as well. And maybe they've just awakened the Tiger here, because... Uh, Wigan realise they're in a, a, a tough situation. Help! Maybe Get step it up a, up a step or two. Here's Mega looking again on that angular run towards the middle. Again, just nice and direct, though, isn't it, from Patrick Mega? O'Neill. Support there from Hampshire, but uh, O'Neill decided to uh, have a look from a solo point of view. Picked up by Field, who's seen a bit of a gap there. The danger was there. There was a bump from Oli Leyland that stopped him in his tracks, but one play to go. And it's another set of six. Another set. Hampshire offloads. Farrell now on this right hand side. So five plays from here. And Wigan again within very close distance to where they want to be. Miski carries it strongly, but four defenders. Three up top, one down the legs. O'Neill waits, delivers. Hampshire across the line, drops it off for Farrowman. Now it's Farrell. Farrell with a step. London almost back on their own line to defend. O'Neill, Hampshire. Here's Thompson. 
Two plays, two tackles for London to make. But it, oh, O'Neill from Dummy Half, real determination. And again, that online defence from London will be scratching its head. O'Neill got up and went past and didn't find much resistance. And Wigan again extend that lead. Well, London's right hand side, they were stretched. And he knew that Brad O'Neill, when he's just had a little look up, he scanned right, he scanned left, he spots it in a bit wide of the rug, and his speed does everything else. You can see a little look over his shoulder, again the double look over. And I think it's Will Lovell, look at him, he gets up, he just opens up. He doesn't move, he plants his feet, and that's just enough for the hooker. He's got Harvey Hill pushing up in the next hole, which again attracts a couple of defenders. Jay Field goes on a win. He knew that Jacob Jones couldn't get set. It's a quick play of the ball, and they couldn't stop the speed from that point. Well, they're looking richly resourced in that dummy half position, don't they? O'Neill showing us there what he can do. We've seen the last couple of weeks, Tom Fowler showing his potential, and Cruz leaving to come back from his ankle injury in a couple of weeks' time, maybe. Maybe back for Salford next week, I think is the word potentially so there is a depth just for the moment O'Neill is uh, congratulating himself as well he might because that was sharp work Kieran taking up his time ahead of this kick certainly not the most difficult of the day from him should strip this one over fairly easily and it does and the lead runs out to 30 points so what is becoming a typical Wigan performance this year in the, the Super League at least the Betfred Super League it's a minimum of 30 points they're scoring in each of the three games and there could be a lot more to come here yeah, well just be clinical and take your chances read what's in front of you react to what defenders do if you spot a defender that's made the wrong choice exactly like Will Lovell did then you take that chance and you go for it. It's a difficult uh, position that Mike Eccles finds himself in here, isn't it? The rookie coach in Super League. Had a fantastic impact last year. Penalty here for Wigan for the ball steal. A bit of frustration from them. Knowing after conceding points, after getting back into the game as well and, and doing all that, that hard graft. Back here, boys, back here. To strip the ball. Thanks, Will. Just trying to man and him, take him to ground. Tag Chan. Marcus Stock, it was. Yeah. He's pulling his arms apart Six as if to game. say, What me? Again, it's a set restart. It's been plenty of those given away by London. This is uh, Jackie Chan involved. O'Neill, there you go, putting it back, and Hampshire with a rare chance to start. Ryan Hampshire, he's done time and distance down the years, hasn't he? 11 years since he made his debut initially for Wigan. And here comes Field, with a dance and a dash, and trying to get things opening up. Still tackles in the bag, O'Neill to Field, and Field puts a bit of a spin on, and the pass away, and Kieran offloads to Isa, who juggles back to Field again. He has the ball stolen away by Hakan Maludi. And uh, somehow, London survived all of that. Line intact and ball back in hand. You thought they were going to be in then, Willie really. Isa just, when he taps the ball back to Jay Field, well, Hakim Maludi did ever so well to get on that ball. He thought they had them stretched. Nice offload from Adam Kieran. Keeping the ball alive. And now the Warriors just looking to turn the screw defensively. Hold. An intensity to this Wigan defence. Keeping London locked at their own end of the field. It's going to need a big kick at the end of this, you'd rather fancy. Well, it's uh, one from Butterworth. It's behind his 20 metre mark by a long way, but he's also a long way away from finding touch as well. And here comes Eckersley who sets Wigan back up in position, inside their opponent's half, with five plays to go. Wardle, testing out the resolve of that London defence. O'Neill, marching in. Another set of six. How many set repeats have London given away? 
Now it's taken on by Mago, who's all the way through to score. Simply unstoppable Patrick Mago. Thought he had a try in the first half that was ruled out, but no doubts this time. And Wigan look as though they are set to run away with this now. Just pure power from them. Been ever so impressed with what the forwards have done in Tyler De Bree, Luke Thompson, Patrick Mago, Harvey Hill. Those four players that have certainly just made big inroads into London's defensive line and they just can't quite stop them. Jake Wardle, when he goes at the line, he's got Abbas Miski, he chooses just to get down and try and play the ball as, as quick as he can. And they're just on a roll, the Warriors. It's been nice and condensed in the middle of the field, just tic-tacking up the middle. They go at the line, inside ball to the big man. Then Rodgers just falls off. Patrick Mago, well, it's going to take a good defender to stop him five yards from the line, someone that size. Maurice well, Butterworth was left one man standing there, wasn't he, trying to hang on to him and close him down, but no chance with Mago at pace and that close to the line. And Kieran with a chance to kick the goal here. We saw the, the sim bidding of Rob Butler in the 46th minute and in the uh, the eight nine minutes that have passed since we're going to go to amass 14 points i think if kieran can put this over two tries and three goals 16 22 when he went off 16 36 when he uh, will eventually come back on again that could be the difference couldn't it when you're playing against the world champions and you've got 13 men on the field it's going to be hard enough if you're at the bottom end of the table and the Warriors up against the 12 men. Patrick Mago just powers over. When you say a simple try, it took some some power to get over there, but again, it was just some poor defence from the Broncos. Well, one piece of good news for London is that Alex Walker is on at the field. His first appearance of the season. He's jogging into the full-backs position, just come on for the interchange bench. One that uh, they hope can keep healthy here on in. That have missed him in the early stages of the year. London veteran Alex Walker. O'Neill. His field. I saw away to Kieran. Kieran just toying with a touchline back inside for Miski. Wigan keeping it alive dangerously again here. London's defence having to reassemble in face of that threat. Hampshire goes across the line. Farriman now with a pass. And Semba met as he gets the ball, but is still able. He is so powerful. So good. Six tackles the next. Wardle switches it back in. Farriman again. And on the six, we're going to running it. Isa and on the six Wigan will find themselves stopped. So London get possession back again, but look where they are again. So close to their own line. Well, they're back up to the full complement now, 13, and Wigan choosing to run the ball. And they've got incorrect play the ball. Play one. Play one, they get the ball back 10 yards from the line. And then it's an incorrect play the ball. Do you know what? They just kill you. It absolutely kills your players like that. half has he Rob Butler Wigan looking to prosper There's a run here, well again O'Neill a dummy half it's Farrimond it's popping it up but Two. London's Three. defense is not to be punctured on that occasion O'Neill again <laughs> incorrect play the ball well, there you go, referee's consistent. One each now in the last what, minute. And certainly clamping down on that this year. You see, it's all about speed. Stay square, Luke! Luke! It's a little bit of light relief for the London Broncos. On a day which just oh, at the moment is turning torrid, but they have shown a sprightness and a a willingness for the battle which will 
hold them in good stead for the weeks to come. It's not every week they're playing the world champions. Butler is delivering it, but finding no way through. Jones, but he has found an offload. There's Leyland. Attendance of just over 4,000, I think, today is, uh, is what we're being told. Confirmation thereof. And the encouraging part is a lot of them paid customers. I know they got about 5,000 for their opening game, didn't they? against uh, the Catalans, but a lot of those were, were giveaways to try and encourage crowds through. I think today everybody's paying, most people are paying. I don't think Terry's paid, but <laughs> most everybody else is paying. Here's Botlaff. In fact, I know for sure Terry's not paying. <laughs> One play to go. But to a feated out kick is uh, from Leyland. Oh, could have been a penalty. Ah, yes, Walker went down yeah. suspiciously there, didn't he? Yeah, he was nudged off the ball. I think it was Luke Thompson who just nudges him out of the way. To be fair, the referee's happy with the call. He just goes across his path. Oh, and suddenly, Wigan are breaking, and here comes a young fella with a big name to make for himself. Zach Eckersley has gone fully 80 yards there to score yet another Wigan try. And that's one that he will remember for many a long year. Just put his head back, got his knees and elbows pumping, and there was nobody catching him and nobody getting close. Well, I first watched this young man when he was on loan at, with the Smarty Pete, sent him out to get some experience, played eight times, and he's a big, powerful man. He finds himself on the wing in this game, but he'll end up in the centre. He's got some skill, and just look at that acceleration. Pulling away from those London players. Quality finish from the youngster. Nice little play from Magnus Miski, knowing that if he just gets him in a two-on-one, he opens up the field, he's gone. The young man, they said just 20 years of age. Some size, hasn't he? debut a couple of years ago in a game against Hull Kingston Rovers where a lot of youngsters play but it's a different emotion altogether on the other side of the fence because uh, Mike Eccles and Ryan Sheridan knows know now that the game has gone a long time ago the game has gone it's a question of how their side dig in and make sure that this doesn't become a very big and embarrassing scoreline here well, well that's it isn't it well starts against have not helped them they've, they've killed them at times like they had a good patch before half time and straight after half time. The Simbinning proved so costly for them. And then all of a sudden, when we're going to play on the front foot, even when they back up to the full complement, they couldn't just stand the pressure that Matty Pete's men were putting on them. Well, there are 20 big minutes to come here. This could be a bonanza, or we could be celebrating London's ability to stick in the, not the contest but stick in the stick game, in the game yeah. yeah don't don't let that scoreboard get ugly don't let that away side get get that far away from you that it becomes embarrassing all right to concede 42 points at home well any coach will tell you that that's not good enough you want paying customers to come keep coming through the door you've got to perform Leyland with the restart Wigan back in possession safely patched and here comes another big onslaught on that London defence, albeit from deep. December hitting bodies and threatening to scatter them, but they hang on manfully. Mago helps it on its way. Hill is pushing. It's the Wigan fans who are in terrific voice at the moment. And it's Wigan who get the penalty. And again, it's just extra fight. The Warriors have just been ploughing up that centre field with the forwards going going forward. London just trying to dominate them. They couldn't do that, they couldn't just slow. It was Harvey Hill down, turn him on his back. They gift the field position over. And now they find themselves defending in their own half again with Harvey Hill bringing the ball forward. Just a slight bedraggled look to London at the moment as they try to stop yet another Wigan wave coming their way. Maker bouncing, pushing, asking all those questions. 
is Forber. Forber skipping, having a go, but well met by Rob Butler. Who's rolled into dummy half this time? Hampshire sees a bit of a gap trying to take off, but quickly across Sam Davis, who's recently returned to the field from the interchange bench, makes that tackle. Hill to Farriman, and Field pops one up over the top. Takes long arms from Zach Hackersley to make sure he keeps hold of that ball. Fast legs and long arms. It's a good job he's six foot four. Farriman with a chip. Asking a question or two, the ball's been lost forward here, I think, from Walker. And so it'll be Wigan who get possession back again. And so close to that beleaguered London line. Well, it just seems like relentless pressure, doesn't it? From where they are, nice little kick and good pressure. And again on Walker, he goes up, he thought the ball went backwards. The ref called it forward. And unfortunately, they've got another set to contend with here. And I think the way that the Warriors are playing, they're going to score in this next set of six. Hampshire's run round the base of the scrum and has run through the London defence to score a very simple-looking try. The moment he put the ball in the scrum, I think he knew exactly what he wanted to do, and that's what he's achieved. And we're going to have yet another score, and they're creeping towards that half-century. You could just sense it was coming. The way that... London looked off the scrum the way that they were defending the shape that they were presenting and the way that the Warriors approached that scrum a lot of communication going Ryan Hampshire knew what he had to do rejoin the club back in 2023 started his career there and he's a player that backs himself had a couple of bad injuries during his time but certainly knows how to play and his skill his speed his vision gets around the back of the scrum and thinks, yeah, do you know what? I've got some shape outside of me, but I'm going all the way myself. Good finish, good confident finish from Ryan Hampshire. Well, it's hard to say that the two halves today are making a claim for those positions when you consider the quality of Bevan French and Harry Smith at six and seven, but they have not let their side down, have they? The, the veteran, if you like, Hampshire, and uh, the youngster, Farriman. Well, it's a, it's a squad game, isn't it? Like, obviously, Hampshire and Farriman are different ends of their career and where they are but Mike Pete knows that successful teams need strength in depth and what this game has proved today for him is he's got that in those two players to come in Wigan coaching crew like this stuck on the back of the 59 bus they're stuck in a traffic jam there's not a lot of emotion there is there they just look on in calm calculation of what's going on as Adam Kieran gets ready he hopes to add another two, and he has added another two. <laughs> and we don't need touch judges, we just need the referee to whoop out the yes as the ball goes over. It's 16 points to 48. And there's the back of the 59 bus again, who will be delighted if they're not showing it too intensely at the moment. He's saying they, won't look, they don't look good fun on a night out. I think that's what you're saying, Dave. Look, they'll be, they'll be happy inside. Well, they'll be less those, happy. Those two won't be happy. But they knew the size of the test, didn't they? I don't think Mike Eccles and, and his assistant, Ryan Sheridan, would have been in any doubts about this is going to be a very difficult season from start to finish. Yeah, and they knew it was going to be a very difficult game, even when they looked at the players that weren't playing for Wigan today. With some of the youngsters like this man on the ball, Julian Semba, quality, quality player that they've got in the ranks. But the end of the first half, start of the second, they had something to build on, unfortunately. The ill-discipline, a bit of sloppiness and end the sets, oh, that's what's not oh. helped them. We're going to dominate your possession in this second half. And they've dominated the scoreboard as a result of that. Isa back to Mako, and here comes Farriman, and now it's with Field, and there's a threat instantly. But he's, um, he's wrapped up well on that occasion by Meadows. Does his job. Release, Last play, arm in the air from the referee. Fireman with a kick downfield. Kershaw with a safe catch. Looking to bring it back with purpose. Good chase from Wigan. The line was efficient and London start there. And he's scanning across that, that line, like you said. It was efficient. There's just nothing. There's no gaps anywhere. There's no one shot the line. There's no one sitting back. 
Good square. Well, you got. This is what we can look forward to from Wigan's point of view. Salford next Thursday night. I was going to say, you could see that live on Sky. You can see all those games live on Sky because every single game is live on Sky Sports this year. Three, a week, uh, three away games after this. They'll be happy with their travels so far. High tackle. Yeah, you didn't need Harvey Hill. It's just a bit of a, a swinging arm. You know, Patrick may go and involved with it. Little tip when he goes through, Patrick may go hill over the top. It's enough right in front of the referee. Bit of a grab, nothing in it. Thanks, boys. Nevers finds touch, and London charge again through Buffalo. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm not well so sure he can you... carry a ball and he can carry a tackle, can Ensemba. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure that you'd pick out those two, would you? Oh. But Ensemba down below, Patrick may go over the top and. What's a worth out of dummy half? This uh, is stuck. Marcus stop put down. Butterworth again goes dashing to that right hand side. Meadows looking to create something here. And Kershaw with the dive and claims the try. See what the referee has to say about this. I have a try. Can you check touch line and grounding? What about the video referee? OK, it's tackle three. The live decision is a try. Lee Kershaw is in possession. Still in possession, still in the field of play. And he grounds the ball. Thank you, I've made my decision. Well, again, it's another fabulous finish. Lee Kershaw, he's had a day to remember, hasn't he? And a great finish in the corner. Well, that never say die attitude, that's all that the coach, Mike Eccles, can ask for when the scoreboard's so when the scoreboard's so lopsided. Don't give up, keep playing till the final end. Give the fans something to go home with and a bit of fight in the final ten minutes is what I want to see from you. Well forget about all the stats of what we've done with the ball and what we haven't done with the ball. Let's just turn up for each other. Give yourself a chance to score some points, get yourself in a position. Big kick from Ollie Leyland over there. And it's worth worth remembering as well, and we ha perhaps haven't mentioned this enough today, and it just reminds us to see Ollie Leyland taking this kick. And London started the year with a bit of strife, didn't they? Billy Leyland, his brother injured before the season began, the hooker, Dean Parata missing today because of an HIA. Lewis Beanak, the prop. Ethan Natoli was another player who went in mid-season. They, they, they've had their problems even before this season kicked off, and they've continued in these early weeks. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's what we said early on in the first half. We spoke about that they're not the biggest of the squad because of those losses, and it's difficult. They're trying to get players in, they're trying to build the team as the season's going. And Mike Eccleton and Ryan Sheridan have just got to turn up to training every day when things go against them with a smile on the face. Oh, oh dear. There's not much oh, smiling about no that, smiling is there? After that, is there? Spilt by Meadows. Wigan looking to get uh, a quick reaction. They'll go back to the knock-on. Well, that's... Uh, and that's... My, my sort of point, like, when mistakes go like that, you scored a try, you think, right, OK, let's get through it now. We've got another set of six. You made the mistake. How many times have they done that in this game? Well, it doesn't help you. All of a sudden, it gives the ball over. You're on the back foot, you're defending. You're looking across the strike that's in front of you. Jake Wardle, Adam Kieran lining up in the centres. You've got Jay Field just loitering around the rook area. And young Jack Farman over on the left. Well, here we go again. It's similar to the route he took for the try there, but this time the pass away from Ryan Hampshire to Jay Field. And Field is watched well by that London defence. Over back to the middle again. Here's Mako. Flat pass. And the offload and Harvey Hill will go ramping over. Takes Wigan to that half century. Couple of times. London defence maybe not as tight as it could have been on its own line. But Wigan are prospering. They've created that pressure. They've created that fatigue. And they've created yet another try. And they've created that fatigue from hard work from the middle of the, middle of the field. I think the forwards have been tremendous today. The mistake from the kickoff, 
And whenever we watch and talk about the Warriors, everyone always is drawn to the, the likes of Jay Fields of this world and Bevan French's. I think the forwards have been brilliant. Harvey Hill is one of those players who've absolutely turned up. Nice little interplay between the forwards and Jackie Chan. Patrick may go to the youngster Harvey Hill who goes over for his second try of the game. It's been a big afternoon for them. Well, he was once a local favourite here, wasn't he, for a short while, four games on loan at London. There you go, those were smiles. Yeah, we've got a smile, yeah. Well, if you can't smile at this, there's not a lot to smile about, is there? As Wigan just keep rolling on and on and on, and who's to stop them? Well, maybe Salford next week. Fancy their chances after the first win in over four decades at St. Helens last night. Paul Rowley's side ripping up expectations in the early stages of this season. Here's Kieran. Looking to add another two. He does, <laughs> he does add another two. 22 points to 54. Oh, that's a big scoreline, that is, and now when you start looking at it, you love seeing forwards just passing the ball to each other. And that involves all three middles. The prop four, two prop forwards, loose forward. Nice interplay, nice confident finish from the young man, Harvey Hill. fans are turning it into a bit of a party at the moment behind the sticks this is field Wigan loving to try to entertain O'Neill and here's Miski it's a long season it, it's early stages but just at the moment Wigan are looking like they are as you'd expect them to be the trail leaders at the moment. Well, that's it, they're there for everyone. Well, they're coming beat. again, oh. they're coming again, and the Simba is galloping through, and he's looking for support, and he goes for Hampshire, and Hampshire passes to Kershaw. Oh, he's picked the pocket. Well, they would have been teammates at one stage, I'm sure, but not today. Well, he did well, and again, even like that, stopping the try from being scored shows a bit of fight. Yeah, they've lacked a bit of skill, they've lacked a bit of composure, they've lacked a bit of strength in defence. But that's what you like to see. Ryan Hampshire look, goes for the offload to one of his teammates, but Lee Kershaw comes back and saves a, a, a certain six points. They were together for a two or three years at Wakefield, weren't they, Hampshire and Kershaw? Maybe, maybe he knows the call. Yeah. <laughs> Familiar voice shouting, yeah, give me the ball. Penalty clears the halfway line just. London start in an adventurous situation here inside their opponent's half. And here comes Sam Davis with another thumping resistance from the Wigan big fellas. It's with Walker. Bassett. Searching right with level and then pass away. But Wigan's defense recovering well and uh, stopping Story in his tracks. Here's Maloudi. A couple of plays to go. 20 meters to cover when it lands in the hands of Meadows. Straightened up by Stock. And in marches Butterworth, but it's a penalty. And another set of six. Yeah, Tacky Chan. The referee James Feller straight in front of him says they ripped the ball out. So can they finish here with a flurry in the final four minutes? Jordan Williams has uh, got his name on the score sheet already. Left and quick hands. And Maloudi. Trying to track his way in the middle, the kick. There was a bit of a, a collision there, and Maloudi has got his side a penalty here. Lucky Maloudi, just appealing 
to the to the referee. It's a box of tricks, isn't it? And it's Jackie Chan who just takes him out. Knocks him off his feet. Clear penalty. So the tap, and they go again, and they look for some reward. Stop. Stopped. Butterworth skips it left. For a moment, Leyland's eyes would have lit up. He thought there might have been a gap there, but there wasn't, so he passes, and he's passing. This is Butterworth again. Back with Leyland. Now it's with Meadows. And on that right side, level pushes. Wigan reorganising themselves in defence. Little win in the tackle slows things down. It's with Meadows. It's not the best of passes. Goes behind Davis, picks it up untidy, but at least safe. But they've lost 10 yards with that. Butterworth again. Going right. And um, Walker with a, a, a pass out the back door. Butterworth tumbles and takes a roll. And London sizing up what's ahead of them. And what's ahead of them is an Semba as Lovell again is stopped. Last play for London Broncos. Two minutes left to play in the game. It's a chip and a chase. Isa has it. The bounce is kind enough. And Wigan, five from their own line, will be happy with possession back now. Well, there's enough Wigan defenders then back to just pounce on that ball and make sure that they've retrieved it. Some tired boys in both sets of jerseys, really. Wardle. Smarth is playing the ball and suddenly Misk is travelling. Wigan of, almost up to the halfway line. The amount of support that, that the Wigan players have when they go over the line, it's just like relentless. It's like a wave of attack. Oh, inside ball, terrific stuff, and Field goes racing away. And he didn't need support, but he passes away to Kieran. Well, Field could have walked over himself, but unselfishly, he gives the ball to Adam Kieran who scores Wigan's latest try and puts himself in a very kickable position here as well as Wigan look for the 60 points here. You know, we've not really talked much in this game about, about Jay Field. But on the one opportunity that he does get, he takes it, doesn't he? And like we were saying, in the build-up to this try, they're just flooding forward in support. That's why they're so dangerous. And also, they know that they've took some energy out of London in the middle of the field because of the work that the forwards have done. And Jay Field just goes through a gap, gives the ball to Adam Kerr and unselfishly to score the try. And Terry, you've uh, you've had the job of picking the player of the match today. Do you know I've been I've been drawn to the forwards. I've been drawn to the likes of Tyler Dupree, I've been drawn to Patrick Mayo, Harvey Hill, scored a couple of tries. But Luke Thompson, I think he was on for about 60 minutes, and it wasn't what he just did with the ball, it was what he did off the ball as well. His push, his support, his defence, it was awesome. That absolutely laid the platform in the early stages of the game and for the opening 60 minutes. Well, Wigan's biggest win against the London Broncos was a 64-8 victory in 2004. Not quite those proportions here today, not far away, but London have given plenty to this. Wigan, though, have given plenty more. Kieran. We'll have a look. This takes it to the rounded 60 points. Wigan just carry on resoundingly. London Broncos had their moments here today, but they were too few and far between against the quality of the world club champions. Wigan winners, and we're back with analysis and interviews very, very shortly.